grade sevens, Helen here, and that means it is time for another natural sciences lesson. What are we going to explore today? Well, we're going to look at energy transfer diagrams. In our last lesson, remember we spoke about useful energy and wasted energy. We looked at different appliances, such as this hairdryer, and we worked out what was the energy input, what was our useful energy output, and what was our wasted energy output. And according to our law of conservation of energy, these two aspects form an equation. The input must equal the energy output plus the wasted energy. So when we talk about energy output, we're talking about the useful and the wasted energy. And these two sides of our equation must equal each other because of the law of conservation. We can't create new energy somewhere along the line and we can't destroy energy. So let's remind ourselves, looking at our hairdryer example, what is the energy input? Well, it is the electrical energy. What do we intend as the use of a hairdryer? Well, it's first of all, it must produce kinetic energy because the kinetic energy blows the air out of the hairdryer, but it must also produce heat energy, thermal energy. It must get hot. It has little elements inside it that heat up and the air blows over it, blowing out not only moving air, but hot moving air. So that is what the hairdryer is intended for. And therefore, these energy outputs are what we call the useful energy. But no one can talk to you when you are drying your hair because of all the sound it makes. The sound energy is our wasted energy. It doesn't help us dry hair or dry anything that we're using the hairdryer for. So we would say then that our sound energy is our wasted energy. And if we add up the electrical energy input and the wasted sound energy plus the useful energy output, we should find that these two amounts of energy are equal. Now, I'd like to introduce you to Captain Matthew Sankey. Here he is. Doesn't he look very smart with his moustache and whatnot? He invented a way to show energy transfers in a system, but not only to show the energy transfers within the system, but also he found a way to take into account the law of conservation of energy because he accounted for all the energy transfers, including, very importantly, the wasted energy. So what Matthew Sankey devised was a way to say, right, we've got a system, we're putting in this amount of energy, we're getting out useful energy, but look, we can also measure the wasted energy that we are putting out. And therefore, we can maybe improve the design of our appliance if we can minimize that wasted energy. And he, the diagrams that he invented are called, named after him, Sankey diagrams. So that means we usually write them with a capital S because they are named after Matthew Sankey. Now, Sankey diagrams, let me stress, summarize all the energy transfers in a process. And the diagrams use arrows to do that. So arrows are very useful because they show a direction. We can see in which direction an energy transfer is taking place. But in Sankey diagrams, we've got an added um, bit of information that we can gain. The 
thickness of the arrow tells us the amount of energy that's involved. So a very thick arrow refers to lots of energy being transferred. A, a thinner arrow will refer to less energy. So when we have an energy uh, transfer system, like for example, we'll, we'll take our very simple light bulb, we could show the energy transfer process like this. Energy input, and here's our little arrow showing that the energy input is the electrical energy and the energy output is going to be the light energy. But it only shows our useful energy transfer. The diagram as it stands is incomplete. Can you look at it and tell me what aspect is not accounted for? Remember, the light bulb also produces heat energy. And in this diagram, we have not accounted for the heat energy. In other words, the wasted energy. And Matthew Sankey was involved with designing steam engines and trying to make steam engines as energy efficient as they could be. And when he started producing his diagrams, he also, in the diagram, accounted for the wasted energy. And in this way, when people saw how much energy was wasted from the steam engine process, they were able to design ways to make their steam engines a lot more energy efficient. So let's look at a Sankey diagram for our light bulb. All right, remember, we're going to be summarizing all the energy transfers taking place, including our wasted energy. And now we get a very, very accurate picture of the energy transfers in a system. We're also showing the law of conservation of energy accurately. In other words, we're showing that no energy is destroyed. So this is our Sankey diagram. It's the set of arrows in green. And it shows that, for example, we put electrical energy into the system. Here is our input energy. And we've measured it as 100 joules, for example. Now, according to the law of conservation, if our input energy is 100, we must see that our useful energy plus our wasted energy must equal to 100 joules. So let's have a look. When you measure the energy, you find that the light energy that is produced, which is our useful energy, is only 10 joules. Wasted energy, the heat energy, is in fact 90 joules. Now, what does this show us? This energy, the 90 joules, 90%, for example, of the whole energy input is wasted energy. So the Sankey diagram for a, an old-fashioned filament light bulb shows that most of this input energy is in fact wasted. And so, therefore, we can come to the conclusion that our light bulb is actually energy inefficient. It's not using the input energy in a very efficient way to give us maximum useful output. So we have the invention of these energy saver light bulbs. Now let's compare the two Sankey diagrams. Here's the diagram we saw before. 100 joules as our input energy, 10 joules as our useful light energy, and 90 joules as our wasted heat energy. Now, if we did a, a Sankey diagram for our um, energy saver light bulb, we'll see that we still put in 100 joules as our input energy, but now, Look at the thickness of this arrow 
compared to the thickness of this little arrow. Suddenly, we're seeing that our light energy, in other words, our useful energy, is up at 75 joules, whereas our heat energy was a very wide arrow. It's now a thinner arrow. And our wasted energy is now down at 25 joules. So we could say that our light bulb, the old-fashioned filament light bulb, is 10% energy efficient. However, the new type of energy saver light bulb is in fact 75% energy efficient. And so we can see that less energy that is wasted, more efficient. And this is why there's a move to replace your old-fashioned filament light bulbs with energy savers. Now, let's spot the error in this Sankey diagram. We've got a Sankey diagram for a hairdryer because we've been talking about our um, hairdryer and the kind of energy that it produces. We know that there are three forms of energy that are produced as outputs. So let's just divide our arrow and write up here output. And here on this side, we've got our input energy. And we know it has an electrical cord. Our input energy is in the form of electrical energy. And this hairdryer uses 750 joules. Now we've got a variety of widths of arrows showing our output energy. And that means that our output energy has different amounts. So let's start with this top arrow, which refers to the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is going to result in the blowing of the air, all right? The blowing of the blow dryer, or we could say the moving air. 125 joules of this input energy is used to produce movement of air. Also, a number of percentages of this energy in, in terms of joules, it's 150 joules, is produced as sound energy. 550 joules is produced as thermal energy or heat. So we know that this form of energy, the kinetic energy is useful, the sound energy is wasted, it doesn't help us blow dry our hair, and our thermal energy is our thermal energy is useful. But now what did I tell you? about the law of conservation of energy. Whatever our value for the input, it must equal our values for the output. So we know, I've told you, there's an error in this diagram. Could the error be in terms of the amounts of energy? Is this diagram showing us the law of conservation? Well, we know that the input must equal the output. The input is 750. Our output is 125 plus 150 plus 550. And if we add those together, we're seeing that our output energy, if we total all the forms of energy, is 825. So 750 is not equal to 825. In other words, this particular Sankey diagram does not obey the law of conservation of energy, which means we have to go back and reevaluate those numbers that we got in order to make the input balance the output. So now hopefully you can draw a Sankey diagram or you can look at it and interpret it and in fact we will do more work on Sankey diagrams in our next lesson. And that's it then for today.
grade sevens. I hope that you'll bring paper and pen to our next lesson so that we can look at some Sankey diagrams in more detail. For today, goodbye.